Ready to shine inside out? Welcome to Polish Beauty Podcast, where ambition meets empowerment. We talk business, beauty, brain, body. I am your host, Dr. Daisy Ayim, triple board certified cosmetic surgeon and OBGYN. Let's get polished. Welcome back to another episode of Polish Beauty Podcast. And I'm really excited about this topic that I want to delve right into it. We're going to be talking about everything cold, but in a good way. Think of yourself walking out of Antarctica. Immediately you think cold, but I want you to imagine colder. Yes, there's something that's colder than Antarctica. So this episode, if you've heard about biohackers, if you're into longevity, if you're into recovery, if you're into wellness, you probably have heard about cryotherapy. And we're going to talk everything cryotherapy. We're going to learn what it is. We're going to talk about the benefits, how to utilize it, and where do you get cryotherapy. So let's get right into this podcast talking about something that I actually love the idea of, but I personally have not delved into it yet. I say yet because it's on my bucket list in 2025. You know, I generally don't like cold. So when I think of cryotherapy, I immediately freeze up. But I have it as my to-do list to do. But I thought, let me just go ahead and bring it to this so we talk about it in this podcast and learn together and take the challenge. And if you've done it, I want you to also let me know. So what is cryotherapy? Essentially, cryotherapy means cold therapy. That's it. And there are two ways to go about doing cryotherapy. You can either do localized, meaning that you just do a foot or your arm, or you can do a whole body, which is stepping into a chamber where your entire body is subjected to extreme cold weather. So when you hear of cryotherapy, ask yourself, are we trying to treat the entire body? or are we just trying to treat a localized area? Cryotherapy involves so much benefits, but where did it originate from? Actually, ancient times, they've been using this as a form of healing, but in 1970 in Japan, it was utilized to treat rheumatoid arthritis. So from there, it has expanded into a current state, which is both for pro athletes, for skin rejuvenation, wellness centers, pain centers, it's everywhere is being utilized in most sectors in our society. But it's really an ancient principle. And of course, Japan, as I mentioned, is the one that kind of brought it into treatment modality and it has just blown up. Just step into a chamber cooler than Antarctica. I want you to have that imagery in your mind. That's what cold therapy is, okay, or cryotherapy. But you don't stay in there too long. You know, two to four minutes is kind of what we recommend, but don't stay too long because there are other complicational risks that can happen with staying longer. Cryotherapy therapy is not a trend. It's actually something that is good for healing. And let's get into the benefits. What are the benefits of cryotherapy? Reduce inflammation and pain. How does it do that? Well, when you step into this cold chamber, your blood vessels vasoconstrict, which means that they tighten up. And that tightening up helps with any inflammation that's in your system. Also, your body releases endorphins. Endorphins, as you know, is a happy hormone. But in this case, it actually helps relieve pain. So that's how you get the benefits of decreased inflammation and pain with uh, cryotherapy. The second thing is that it speeds up muscle recovery. We all know, at least if you don't know, athletes, whether they're pro or amateur, they utilize cryotherapy a lot for recovery because you can just step into this treatment wellness and it helps with the injury of muscles, whether it's from heart training or injury. So that's the second benefit. The third benefit is elevates your mood. As I mentioned, your body releases surge of endorphins when you are step into this cryotherapy chamber or particular area, and all that endorphins is happy hormones, so your mood is instantly elevated when you do a cryotherapy. Also, another benefit, it improves your sleep quality. Imagine, like, you know, sometimes when you want to go to sleep at night, you turn on the AC, 
so that it can be a little cool or chill and you sleep really well. That's kind of the same concept with cryotherapy. Your post-sleep uh, experience is improved when you do a cryotherapy. Also, your skin glows. This is why you see a lot of cryotherapy in a lot of uh, rejuvenation centers or skin treatment modalities because your skin actually glows. And the reason is because there's this boost of collagen and tightening of your skin. Another benefit of cryotherapy is just feeling great, you know, feeling great about yourself is something that you cannot put into a package. You know, you, you step in and you're afraid and you get cold and you step out and you feel like you have conquered something. So just feeling overall great is a benefit of it. Nothing good, even as cryotherapy comes without potential complications. All right. What are the complications or risk? I should say risk. Because when I say complications, it sounds like you had surgery or a procedure and you get complications. There are some risks with anything that's good, including cryotherapy. Number one, cardiovascular. If you have heart condition, it may be a great idea to consult your physician before utilizing or undergoing cryotherapy. If you're pregnant, I would definitely say do not go through cryotherapy. Talk to your obstetrician to guide you through this process. If you have other medical elements that you're unsure of, do not go through cryotherapy. You know, with the popularity of this biohack everywhere, especially on like TikTok, where it just seems like everybody's doing it and getting all this amazing results and feeling great, you can kind of get caught up in that trend or in that mode of TikTok. But just remember, you can always consult your physician. If you have any questions or have any doubt, please do, because it's not one size fits all. As much as everyone seems to be doing it and it's working well, you have to look at your own situation to make sure that you are a good candidate. Overall, biohackers or longevity seekers or wellness seekers, they use cryotherapy to reset stress. It's a great way to kind of get a good reset in your life. It's good for recovery, as I mentioned. And lastly, it just improves your cognition, how you think, your clarity. So it's something that is very easily incorporated into your life, and you don't have to do too much about it, all right? It is a known thing from studies and research that shows that cold exposure helps regulate inflammatory pathways, increase mitochondria efficiency. So there is some science-backed benefits of doing cryotherapy. I personally think cryotherapy is the ultimate biohack. You know, although I've not personally do it as I've confessed in the beginning of this uh, episode, I do believe wholeheartedly in it and I am going to do a session or I'm going to overcome my fear of cold and height. First, I'm going to do cryotherapy. All right. So how do you go about I guess, how do you find a place to do your cryotherapy? There are a lot of gyms that have cryotherapy booth or cold plunge that you can utilize. There are studios that are popping up in towns and cities where you can reserve and do your cryotherapy. The cost varies. I I think it goes anywhere from like $25 to $75. Obviously, if you're part of a club or a gym, that might be included in your membership fee already, so you don't have to worry about that. And also, there's a lot of, like, purchases that you can do and have your own private cryotherapy at home. It's a little bit pricier, but that's an option, you know. And I certainly tell my patients that, you know, if you have the money to splurge, do it and have it at your convenience. Because it's something that definitely can benefit you in the long run. And it's endless, meaning you can use it well into your 70s, 80s, however you want to continue with it, all right? The general recommendation, at least I tell my patients, is you should do cryotherapy about two to three times a week. I think that's frequent enough, but not too much to cause harm. So two two to three times a week is a good starting point. The important thing is to start slow and stay consistent. If you're a super athlete or pro athlete, you want to do it every day and you have the wit and the stand and the clearance and your physician, go right ahead. 
But the purpose of this podcast, if you're a newbie, I would say two to three times a week is something that I generally recommend. You can also pair cryotherapy with other wellness things in your life. For example, other wellness practices are like eating clean, healthy food. Strength exercising is good. Mindfulness living is another thing to incorporate. Cryotherapy cannot, cryotherapy can be a standalone or it can be included as part of a toolbox for your wellness. So you can pair it with other things, okay? I didn't touch on this, but I think it's an important thing to keep in mind. Something like sauna, which helps with heating. And actually, I'm a personal fan of sauna. It's something that can be done too with cryotherapy, okay? So kind of mixing up that routine is important. It's, cryotherapy is not a trend and it's very beneficial. So if you're thinking about it, go right ahead. You have my clearance to do it. It's a trendy freeze, if you want to call it that. And it's definitely a promising tool for your wellness. And it is awesome. It's a great way to recover, glow, and optimize your performance. Stepping into cold might just be the next power move you need in your life. So Thank you for listening to this uh, podcast. If you happen to do cryotherapy after listening to this podcast, let me know. If you've done it and you have a feedback to, uh, to feedback to give me, also let me know. But this is to cryotherapy and it's the next best uh, biohack for anyone out there. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for listening. Video recording of this episode will be featured on our YouTube channel, Dr. Daisy Ayim. We are also found on Instagram at Polish Beauty Podcast or at Dr. Daisy Aim. Remember, a new episode drop every Wednesday, so stay tuned. Please like, share, follow.